All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today we're going to do the pulse testing on the small format digital versus analog consoles. I uh, hope you guys like me saying all right, because I say it all the time. And um, maybe I should do uh, outtakes of nothing but my all rights. Uh, let's see, I've got um, this little pulse tester set up here. It's an AB Systems, SCV made one. They're great. They make a cool little... Um, square wave spike uh, pulse. Um, we'll see that square wave due to the input circuits of the various units. It'll smooth it off. The first thing I'm going to do is calibrate or show you the calibration of these two consoles using a 105, no, 149 hertz uh, tone. And um, what I've done here, it's kind of tricky to do, is to get, um, since I've got 10 channels all in series into one out of the next, I've got to set all the gain knobs on this analog board so that they're, each channel's putting out as close as possible to the same level. Um, it's harder than it seems in that uh, there's non-linearities in the frequency response, there's filters, there's various stuff used with different frequencies, it's not the same. Um, and then on the digital console, it seems like it would be easy because there's uh, numeric representations and theoretically it should all be the same. Turns out this digital console with unity gain on the input versus the output um, doesn't have quite unity gain. It's slightly off. And um, there's some gradations in the gain control. So like it'll jump. I'll, sh I'll show you that too where it steps up. Um, nothing, nothing clicks to another level, whereas the analog's got this very smooth uh, transition with volume. Uh, there's a higher level of gradation on the faders, um, and I'm sure, I know this varies from console to console and different hardware where they can have the gradation steps extremely fine or coarse. Okay, so let's turn on the 500 hertz tone, and you should be able to see it here. Um, we've got the Right now we're looking at the digital console. I can position this so these waveforms are on top of each other. And you can see that they're approximately the same volume with one channel. And we can also see a slight offset in the waveforms. And you can see that the blue, which is the digital, is slightly lower. Uh, we can see that down in the bottom here on channel one. Uh, there's two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, it's moving in relation to it. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back down. Yeah, I'm gonna move the proper one down. We'll move that one up. We'll move this one down. And we can go to the analog. And for the analog, Channel one, two, I'm gonna move it back up. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see what the analog does waveform wise. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And you can see that it has shifted very slightly in um, phase and the back to the digital, we can look at this with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We see more shift. Uh, the difference between, I'm gonna shut this off for a second. Uh, the difference between phase shift and latency. Latency is a time delay. It's uh, the entire signal full bandwidth waiting a period of time before it comes out or um, is delayed. Phase shift is a change in the waveform. There doesn't necessarily need to be a delay. Phase shift can be forward or backward, but the signal actually arrives at the same time. And that seems counterintuitive. Um, and I'm not going to get into that too much. But the difference is, and we'll see it with the pulse. Um, so we did see some shift with the um, analog console of the phase of uh, a little bit. Um, when we put it into the pulse, uh, we can see that the timing remains uh, almost identical. 
Um, the latency we looked at before is about 1.5 milliseconds on this digital console for every A to D, D to A pair conversions. Um, the amount of time that is, you know, it's, it's again keeping things in perspective. Is it bad? Is it good? 1.5 milliseconds is only about 1.7 feet. Uh, so who really cares if the PA is 1.7 feet late? Um, all you have to do is take half a step back and you're 1.7 feet farther from the PA. No big deal. Um, everything's relative. If you have two sources that are 1.7 feet difference and they're being summed electronically, you're going to maximize that issue and you're going to hear lots of problems. If you have them next to each other with a 1.7 foot offset, um, that should be audible. Um, depending on the frequency, and if they're spaced far apart, if they're 20 feet and 21.7 feet from you, it's going to go back to irrelevant again. So, keeping these things in perspective, let's go ahead and put this pulse checker on. And there we can see the pulse of one channel of the digital console versus one channel versus the input signal being sent to it. And... Uh, that looks really good. I mean, what's going into that console, this yellow line, and what's coming out of the console are really, really close to identical. Um, and we can see the offset here from the latency. I'll bring this up. And that little shift right there between the two waveforms. And we'll go down the digital line. Let's go ahead and lay them over each other. And we will uh, go down the console. There's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And going to the left way bus. Uh, we can see that it does change the waveform. We're seeing it kind of, um, the downswing is, um, is increasing. It's got some bounce to it, but it um, looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and I will let you listen to the signals purely as you watch. Now you got to see it. Now just listen for it. I'm going to mute my mic in the video edit. And All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing on the analog. I'm going to put this back to one channel of digital, and let's go to one channel of analog. Here we can see something different. We can see that there's, they're lining up perfectly at the beginning, the front edge, due to no, the lack of latency. But we're also seeing this uh, negative bounce. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and go down the analog channel. Console, you're going to hear the click of me cycling through the faders. One. Cool. All right. So that's the, oh, so now let's go ahead and do digital one to digital 10. So this will be, that's what the analog looks like. The, the digital will have the little latency there. So I'm just going to switch and be quiet.
All right, and for the next one, let's go 10 to 10. So, 10 digital. All right, so now um, I found something really interesting while I was testing this out. That was um, with all the, I got two ash trucks out there. Um, that was with all of the EQs bypassed and high pass filters bypassed on digital console. On the analog console, I don't have the ability to bypass the EQs on this hardware. And the high pass filters are at 100 hertz, so putting those in would, um, would throw things way out of whack. One thing I noticed very interesting with the digital console was let's go ahead and put in the high pass filter. So I'm going to start in the digital console with PFL in a single channel with the pulse. And as I go down the line, I'm going to put in the high pass, I'm going to put in all the EQs first, EQ in. We don't really see much difference, but look what happens when I put the high pass filters in. So there's one channel high pass, no high pass, high pass, no high pass. So let's go ahead and listen to that. And one channel. Now these high passes are set at 20 hertz or as low as they go. They theoretically, hey, we'll just punch in all the high passes. We don't need them. We'll leave them at 20 hertz. But listen to what it's doing to the signal. Um, you should be able to hear that. Uh, when I was listening with headphones, I could hear an added low end to that and a change in the signals purely from inserting a high pass set at 20 hertz uh, due to some um, remnants, some issues caused by filtering. Um, be nice to be able to put the analog console in there and um, high pass that but uh, we don't have that ability but keep in mind the EQs in in the analog console and putting the EQ in and out in the digital console made uh, little to no difference the same thing goes with the gate and the comps which um, if we go to 10 I'll leave this put on one channel and put the gate and comp in seemed to make a little difference in the high frequency there, but it was minimal. Oh, actually it does make a difference with the gate. Uh, gate oh, learning something new. Gate and comps coming in. It took some of the um, high frequency edge off. So there's the gate and comp in, and I'll take them all out. All right, and with them all out, we see this um, little spike up in the front. So we've lost some high frequency energy. Um, I'm not going to do a listen on that. Finally, because uh, I, I said I'd do it, let's take one last look at something before I wrap up. Uh, let's do a gain pot. Let's, we have one channel, PFL. I'm going to go to the gain pot here, and I'm going to click down one. I'm going to go up one notch here. Now, if I turn it down, I go, it jumps. Now, if I do that same thing with a fader,
I can move it very slowly. I can. Oh, no, I can't. Let's try that channel. There we go. Um, let's jump in there too. Yeah, I'm able to very, there's still gradations, but nowhere near as much. This is not a good demo of that. Um, you have to trust me on it. Okay, we'll move on and um, I will do some overload testing on um, the consoles and we can hear what they sound like when we drive them hard, which um, is pretty common. Cool, cool.